thank you all for coming. And I just want to take a, a quick picture uh, because I don't think my, my wife would believe this many people come to listen to me say stuff, right? <laughs> so, yeah, we got to do a selfie with everybody. Hi, right. Hi Wyoming. Hey. Well, thank you. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we're, we're back at WordCamp again. Exciting times, right? The energy is bristling here at WordCamp. Uh, so today we're going to talk about leveling up uh, your WordPress development business. Uh, so I'm going to talk about seven ways. Uh, there might be a bonus way uh, through here uh, to talk about how you can make a profitable second half of 2019. So you can download slides and other goodies here, uh, jasonmcc.com backslash or slash WCATL19. And it's also at the bottom uh, on your right, uh, the bottom right of every slide, uh, just in case you missed this slide. All right, so we ready to take it to a whole nother level? <laughs> All right now, let's go. So who is this for? Are you a freelancer, solopreneur, solo operator, uh, digital marketing agency that handles any uh, WordPress development? Uh, do you, uh, then do you need to get clear on who you seek to serve in the marketplace? Um, you want to work with the right type of client? How you can quickly deliver value and get paid on time, right? And uh, do you need to set up a basic sales page? So you, uh, you'd rather cut off your right arm than set up a sales page? I have a very basic formula for you here in this presentation. So here's what you're going to learn. Customer clarity, right? You're going to learn who you need to target and how to speak to them. You're going to learn how to define your unique value uh, that speaks to your customer's needs, uh, how to communicate it in a, in a unique way, and how to write a basic sales page, right, that speaks uh, to your customer's pain point or their frustration. So my promise to you, at the end of this talk, you'll know this formula, right, for defining your value and writing a sales page. Um, and I'm also going to give you free stuff, right? So I'm going to give you two. Uh, so all the stuff that I'm giving you today is stuff that I use in my personal business, uh, two my master financial spreadsheet templates, all with formulas that are going to auto-calculate uh, your finances, et cetera, uh, client email templates, and a dream client tracking template. Uh, so when you want to find that dream client, here's a way for you to find them and track them. Can you turn your mic on? You're on. It, I don't control the speaker. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so. I'll try to speak up. All right, so some rules. This is not a push button technique, right? So it's going to take some hard work. It's going to take some self discovery, right? So uh, it's going to take at least an hour or two of your day over a week period of time uh, for you to uh, implement this formula into your business. And this is only going to help you if your skill set or your service actually helps people on the other end, right? So this is not for the mediocre, right? So if you're mediocre at your skill set, you know, kudos to you. Let's keep learning. Uh, but this is not for you. So this is for hustlers uh, and people who are sharp at their craft. So does this sound familiar, right? You're generating leads, but you're not getting any sales. So almost everybody you talk to, they want to haggle on that price and or you get a payment, you're excited to get started, but you find out you've just been hired by the client from hell, yes. yeah. right, right? <laughs> or they're just so slow to bring in that money, right? The check's always in the mail, right, mm -hmm. right? Or uh, PayPal's down, right? Like the McDonald's shake machine is always down, <laughs> right? <laughs> or you'd rather cut off that right arm again uh, because you don't want to write a sales page. So does any of this sound familiar? Yeah. Good. Uh, so the actual problem, what you've been doing isn't working because it's based on flawed principles. And I have some notes here. Uh, so you're not focusing on that expensive problem and how you can be an out, how you can be a true asset to your client. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about that dream, uh, the dream client that just pays on time, right? It's deeper than payment, right? It's deeper than money. Uh, working with that dream client, um, you know, both of your goals align, right? It's a project that you want to work on. Uh, so that's. Uh, what I consider that dream client. So there's six pillars. So these are things that you need to, uh, these are six things you need to get clear on, right? So today I'm going to walk you through how I completely changed the way that I positioned myself 
and how I sell my products and services today. So everything that I'm teaching you today is something I've been using for the past few years. So to make this work, there's six critical steps, and I want to walk you through that. Everybody ready to rock? Yes. Let's do it. All right. Who am I? My name is Jason McCullough, and I'm an online marketing expert, and I specialize in helping high-level experts sell their products slash services more effectively. I also teach freelancers how to raise their rates, get more clients, and make better business decisions. I'm the national marketing leader for the Freelancers Union, and I host a free monthly workshop right here in Atlanta, Georgia. And that's my beautiful family uh, right there. So there was a woman out there that said, I want to spend more time with you, right? <laughs> Not only that, but I want to help you raise a family. So hashtag blessed. <laughs> so just 10 years ago, my business, my solo business was just full of complication, right? So many moving parts, uh, full of complication. I was busy selling my skills for peanuts, right? So I was creating websites for Joe the plumber, right? He thought his $20 was worth $100, right? Is everybody familiar with that? So I was performing a skill set, extremely high value skill set, uh, but didn't know how to charge more for it. So, uh, or I didn't even know how to find the people that would charge the amount of money that I needed to charge uh, to really make it profitable. So as a result, I was a highly effective developer slash marketer, uh, and I was you know, really making peanuts, right? I was barely eating ramen noodles, even though I was getting people big results on the other end. So my light bulb moment, I read two books 10 years ago. One, The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. Number two, Duct Tape Marketing. So these two books showed me uh, what I was doing wrong. I was marketing myself as a generalist and a, uh, as, an, a, as a commodity. So I'm sure you're familiar with the job boards. It used to be Odesk, now it's Upwork, uh, Elance, Freelancer, et cetera. I was on those job boards, right? You're a commodity because it's only your, your avatar or your profile picture, a little mumbo jumbo right here about who you are, and a rating, either a thumb up, a thumb down, or a five star, right? So now you're a commodity. And I was marketing myself as a commodity instead of a specialist. Um, so that's what I was doing wrong. So what do things look like now for me? I do have a successful business, uh, so I help people get rid of their headaches uh, or their expensive problems. Uh, I make a good living of that, so shouts out to Matt uh, Mullenweg, right? Uh, and shouts out to everybody uh, who makes WordPress possible uh, because you've helped me pay mortgages, car notes, uh, and uh, set up a retirement account. So I've worked with over 200 really, really great clients in the past 10 years, and even though I specialize, it's not been a death sentence. I still get work from other types of businesses and other business genres. So just because you specialize in one area doesn't mean it's a death sentence for your business. Uh, you're going to get work from other places. So I call this my purple unicorn strategy. Uh, my daughter Adeline likes unicorns, and she likes anything with the color purple. So I call this my purple unicorn strategy. So here's an outline or an overview of that. And we're going to break down and dive deep into all six uh, critical steps here. I'm sorry. Everybody needs to take a picture. OK, got it. Go ahead. Right, so the, these, are things, these are six critical things that you need to get clear on. And so once I got clear on this, I was, I was just, it's like I was stumbling onto my dream client. And I was stumbling onto these people that wanted to pay me a lot of money. right? Um, but again, I had to put in a lot of work, a lot of self-reflection on who I am, what, did I, what I want out of my business, and what I want out of clients. So it's not easy. So pillar one, you always want to go three layers deep on who you seek to serve. You want to get really specific. And here's an example. I want to work with uh, marketing directors or slash managers in the medical device industry who are looking to increase their patient outreach programs. That's super specific, right? Um, but again, it's not a death sentence. I'm still going to work uh, with other types of businesses, but this helps me uh, raise my rates because this is very specific. It's a very specific problem uh, that this type of client has. We're going to hold our questions to the end. Yeah, so make sure you hold your questions to the end, and I'll uh, make sure to answer them. So. Here's a formula, right? So from Jonathan Stark, if anybody's, uh, and not Game of Thrones, right? He's, just, he's a real dude named Jonathan Stark. Um, uh, you can find him at jonathanstark.com. Uh, really great guy. He's a software developer, but he's a pricing authority slash expert. 
in pricing uh, solopreneurs uh, in the development space. Uh, so check him out, right? But he has a formula uh, which helped me get clear. And so I am a discipline who helps target market with expensive problem, unlike my competitors, and here's a unique difference. Um, and so here's an example of that. I'm a web developer or web designer who helps Fortune 500 retailers with abandoned shopping carts on their e-commerce sites. And unlike my competitors, I use A-B split testing to focus on the bottom line instead of wasting my time with arbitrary design changes. So uh, that helps you stand out from the crowd, right? It helps you stand out from uh, you know, all the other people in the marketplace. And it gets really specific, right? Um, I mean, just this, you can charge 10 grand alone just for that, that statement. So pillar two, what problem do you want to help them with, right? So they got 99 problems, you just got to choose one of them, right? So just make sure you choose one problem and make sure that that's an expensive problem. That way, uh, you can raise your rates, right? So um, you want to help them with something really expensive. And the exact ways that you want to help them with that. Right? So what are the three to five to seven to 10 to 12? What are, what are the listicle ways that you can help them with that expensive problem? Right? So these are the features and benefits. Right? So the idea here is to create a productized service with a fairly limited scope, a fixed price, and a fixed delivery deadline. Right? So that way you can create a repeatable process that you can execute on over and over again, and you're confident uh, that you can quote them on price. Uh, so I specialize in PSD to WordPress, and uh, my white space or my pocket is uh, quoting people over the phone. I have a fairly limited scope and a fixed price. Uh, so unlike my competitors who have to quote you, right? Well, it depends. Can you send me the PSD? I need to quote you. I'm going to give you a flat rate price right there on the phone, and nine times out of 10, I'm getting started by the end of the day because I've already gotten a payment uh, through FreshBooks. So, Find that pocket, find that white space, and uh, figure out that limited scope with that fixed price. Uh, so when can they expect the result? So uh, every business runs on time. Time is money. And any uh, down website costs them money, correct? Uh, so you want to uh, define when are they going to expect this result, that specific business result, right? Um, and so when I sp speak about the specific result. Um, so when clients give you a testimonial, they're not going to say, oh, well, that was beautiful code. right? They're going to say, uh, my website helped increase uh, calls to my sales department. right? So that's the type of stuff they're going to say. And that's the type of business outcome that you want. <coughs> What's it going to cost to get that result? So again, notice I said result. And limit your scope and set a fixed price. Exactly how are you going to deliver this help, right? So um, traditionally, you might set up a staging site or a development environment and then migrate that over, right? Are you going to zip it up and send it to them? Or are you going to send them a, a flash drive? Or are you going to mail it off via Pony Express? How are you going to deliver this help? Uh, you want to get really, really clear on how and when uh, you're going to deliver this help. So that's the last step uh, in these critical uh, purple unicorn strategy. So here's an overview of that again. If you missed the picture the first time, uh, you can get another picture. Uh, but that is the purple unicorn strategy. And again, these are six critical steps that are going to get you clear on uh, who you seek to serve and how you serve them and how much you're going to get paid. So now we're going to go on to a basic, a very basic sales page formula. So here's my easy sales page formula, right? So this is, a, this is an overview again. Um, <clears throat> I do have another overview, so in case you miss this picture, you can get another picture. <clears throat> so uh, the first part of this sales page is the pain. You want to lead with the problem. You want to lead with the frustration, right? So. Uh, like I said, it's, it's uh, you know, referred to as a problem section or the headache section, right? And it's literally just you describing that pain that your ideal customer is facing, right? You're explaining uh, how frustrating it is for them, 
Um, and uh, so if we were using an umbrella or uh, a rain analogy, right, you're cold and wet out in the rain. And uh, that seems pretty frustrating. So the dream, right? So uh, in this section, you present the reader with a mirror image of the pain, right? Sticking with a rain example, a, a dream would be you're warm and dry. But notice I didn't explain how they got from cold and wet to warm and dry. Houseway, right? So uh, the fix, this is uh, also the offer section, right? So you want them, uh, so when you're in that dream section, you, you just want them to picture uh, you know, their ideal scenario, right? Which is that business outcome on the other end. Uh, but now you're gonna go into the fix, right? And this is where you're explaining how you're going to fix that, right? So, um, and in the uh, umbrella scenario or the rain scenario, we're talking about uh, they could get inside of a taxi. They can get into the breezeway or a hallway. They can get a raincoat, a poncho, a hat, or an umbrella, right? So that's the fix uh, to their solution. So the first call to action. So make sure that you have some sort of specific purpose, right? So you can only move people along one step at a time in your sales process, right? So you can't ask them to do six or seven things on one page. Make sure you're asking them to do one specific thing. Is that to schedule a sales call with you? Is that to fill out your uh, multi-step nine-page form? Uh, or uh, you know, whatever it may be or to download some sort of content upgrade. Is it a checklist? Is it a PDF? Is it a, a presentation? You know, whatever it may be, uh, make sure that it's one step, one call to action, and make sure that call to action is consistent throughout your page. So social proof, which are called trust signals. So if uh, people have been leaving you Facebook messages, take a screenshot uh, of that Facebook message, and you can now embed that on your site. If people send you a tweet and they think your service is awesome, screen cap that, embed that, right? Or if you have Google My Business reviews, embed those as well. Or Facebook review, wherever you're getting your reviews and however you're getting them. Uh, so uh, FreshBooks has a built-in review system. So when you send uh, an invoice off, they pay the invoice. Uh, it asks them for a review or testimonial, and of course that gets emailed right to you. You can screen cap that and then put that on your sales page. Uh, so you just, the point is, uh, you want other people telling you how awesome you are. You don't want to tell yourself how awesome you are, right? So you want other people to believe that. So any objections, right? I'm sure we all get the same type of stuff, like why are you so expensive, right? Or why is your price so high? Or uh, how are you going to deliver this, or, or how, are you, you know, how do you work, or uh, how do I pay, et cetera. So there's some, there's some common objections, there's some common questions. You want to have an FAQ section in your sales page, right? So this is going to educate uh, the person on, that's viewing your page before they even talk to you over the phone. So that way, uh, you've eliminated that education portion of your 15-minute or your 30-minute call, and now you get right to the business and asking them uh, you know, you know, all about their project. And then here's what makes you unique. You want to make sure that you put something on your page that makes you stand out from the rest and makes you unique. If not, you're just a commodity and you look just like everyone else and uh, they're going to go down the street and hire the other person. Your second call to action. Again, it has to be consistent with the first call to action and make sure it's just one step. Uh, schedule a call, so through Calendly or Vsita or you know, however you book your calls. Uh, it can be through there, or again, it can be your form or content upgrade, however you want it to be. But just make sure that your second call to action is consistent with your first call to action. Or it can just be an anchor link that takes them back up to the first call to action, however you want to work that. And then urgency. Sprinkle in a little urgency, right? Uh, I only take on one, one new client a month. You better hurry up, right? So limited supply, even though it's all digital, right? Um, uh, the first 10 people, et cetera, right? Sprinkle in some urgency uh, to get them to at least book that call or take that, that call to action step. And again, that's the overview 
of the easy sales page formula. And so uh, I urge you to just pull up like a, a Google document or a Word document, whatever your text editor is, right? Pull that up and just put all the text in your text editor. Don't worry about designing a fancy sales page right now. Just put all the words in a document and then worry later about laying it out and looking fancy, right? Don't get fancy up front. Just put it in a document or write it on a cocktail napkin if you want to, right? Just make sure you just get the words down. And then sleep on it. Let it breathe overnight. Come back to it again, right? And so that's really important. Because this is going to be uh, you know, the tool in your utility belt that's going to help sell your services uh, or your products. And that's just an easy sales page formula. So I want to help you move forward, right? I'm just hardwired to help people who help other people. And, uh, and because of that, I just I want to help you uh, move forward. And I host a free uh, monthly workshop the first Wednesday of every month. And you can go to AtlantaFreelancersUnionSpark.com. It's free to sign up. It's free to attend. There's free beer. So, uh, so the Shamley Dunwoody area is where we usually host uh, the first Wednesday of every month uh, from 6.30 to 8.30. Uh, the next topic is uh, financial or finance best practices for freelancers. Um, so uh, if you're like me, you're terrible with money, and you need to learn how to manage your money better. So uh, that's the next topic. Um, so I am done. Let's get to these questions. Um, back to the first point, you know, that had, um, Dr. Dr. three layers deep. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Let's go back to that. Yeah. So, uh, so when uh, when you're trying to figure out who you seek to serve, you you want to make sure that you go three layers deep, right? So instead of I do web design services, I'm looking for, uh, you know, like it says here, uh, yeah, uh, very very specific um, with a very specific problem. So make sure you go that three layers deep. In the back? Um, when you said you seek to serve, did you already kind of like know your niche and then go up to them, or was it kind of just over time? I, no, I, I just, I was like throwing spaghetti at the wall in the, in the beginning. Um, so I just learned it over time. I learned who I like to work with uh, over time. Um, so it, uh, in the beginning, it was, it was, I was just doing everything. Um, sorry, and then second question, so did you go to people, or was it in the beginning just word of mouth through friends? Oh, so I actively pursue um, uh, projects or clients. Um, so especially like here, like marketing managers and marketing directors, you have to actively pursue them. Uh, so I go to trade shows and conferences in that particular niche. So like the medical device industry, I will attend a medical device uh, conference, uh, either by invite of a current company I'm working with, or I'll just pay to go. And I will actively pursue uh, targets. Um, so I'm reaching out in advance, uh, uh, or I'm researching in advance via LinkedIn to find out who are the marketing managers uh, uh, with the big boosts and the sort of medium boosts uh, there. Um, and I'm approaching them, right? So I'm trying, uh, so in my research process, I'm finding out um, do they like alcohol or do they like coffee? Do they like steak or do they like burgers? Uh, and then I'll invite them out for dinner or drinks uh, of course, that's all expensable, right? And uh, I try to walk away with uh, $50,000 or more in leads from any trade show or conference. Jason, do you, can you show us your homepage or an example of a, like, something that kind of shows what you've just talked about, like as a good example of that statement? I mean, because what you're, what you're calling like a sales page, mm -hmm. I'm a little confused. Do you mean that, is it like a homepage? Is it like a... No, it, it, would be a, it would be a sales page for a specific service. So your home page is completely different. Your home page is your receptionist, right? That's your uh, admin pointing people in the right direction uh, throughout your site. But your sales page, that's a deep link inside of your website. So let's say for your web design services, right? So your home page slash web design. Uh, and it's a, it's a specific page built and created specifically to sell that service. So if it's PSD to WordPress, 
It's specifically for PSD to WordPress. Uh, does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Got it. Would it be treated as a landing page? You can call it a, a landing page or a sales page, right? Yeah. It's, it's the same principle. Uh, uh, some people call it squeeze pages, landing pages, uh, sales pages. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, you know the the object uh, the object ob objective is to get them to take one action on the page, right? Whatever that action is for you and your business. We got, we got a whole 30 minutes, people. Uh, we wanted you to go back to the last, next to the last page, the last freelance, freelance union, we didn't get it off. Um, what page would you put it on? Yep, so, the, so a general overview of the Freelancers Union. Uh, so we help with freelancers advocacy. Uh, so non-payment, uh, insurance, benefits, uh, retirement accounts, right? So we have IRAs. Uh, and uh, it's all at no cost, right? So it's just partners that are vetted through the Freelancers Union. And so that's what the Freelancers Union is all about, is advocating for your rights as an independent worker or slash freelancer. Yeah, so uh, there have been, well, there's been movements uh, for uh, freelance isn't free uh, to help with non-payment. Uh, that's, but that's not what you're talking about, right? No, there's a way, there's this thing that's out there um, that's a way for freelancers and developers to handle their books. It's called Profit First. Mm -hmm. And it's a basically this way of setting up your accounts to where you actually have four different banks. Got it, got it, yeah. yeah. For expenses, a certain amount for pay, take your salary from them. Right. Some to pay taxes out of your, mm -hmm. some to your property. Got it. And broken down into percentages based on your, your annual volume. Got it. And, and they're separate. Right. right. So I have a, I have something. It's specialized in that, evidently. Right. And I never run across them. So, I have something very similar in one of the sheets that I give you on the freebies page. Uh, there's a paycheck divider worksheet inside of the entire workbook. So the master financial spreadsheet, there's several workbooks and one of them is the paycheck divider and it's uh, doing what you're talking about. <clears throat> so if you have separate bank accounts, uh, you can take a percentage of that and you, know, you, you enter in uh, your income on one worksheet and it's going to automatically divide that paycheck or that payment. Uh, and that's how I handle my books. It's an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah. I'm still, I'm still old school. I just, I don't do fancy software, uh, except for FreshBooks. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my CRM is actually a spreadsheet. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Well, I, just, I, I realized from uh, your presentation that you actually get quality, better quality clients to charge, you know, the appropriate price. But do you still get um, pushback sometimes or balk? And how do you handle that? Uh, so there are times I get pushback, you know, you know, why are you so expensive or, um, and so I'm handling a specific problem. And so uh, my main objection to that, or I, I always put it back on them and I say, compared to what, right? And so they, uh, they say, well, you're, you're so expensive or, uh, or, you know, why are you so expensive? And I say, well, compared to what, right? Um, and depending on their answer, right, you know, I'll, I'll hit them with another objection, right? But that usually uh, makes them think for a second. And they're like, "Oh well, you're, you know, there's really nothing to compare this to, right? Right? It's not like a uh, there's not a price comparison out there for uh, web design." Yeah. But there are, uh, but yeah, there's uh, plenty of objections. But I have a uh, an objection uh, like formula. So if you want to uh, get with me after the talk, I can actually send that over if you want. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How do you nurture your leads? And what about a lead? What, once you get your lead, how do you nurture that along? Uh, so I use Active Campaign. Uh, Active Campaign has a CRM feature uh, in there. So uh, of course I have my uh, my standard fancy CRM in an Excel spreadsheet, right? So that's my pre my pre sales process, right? Uh, 
and then once I qualify them and I get them to the point like, oh, I need to put these uh, subscribers into a nurture process, that's when I upload uh, you know, that one or 10 or five into active campaign. And I have a sequence of emails uh, depending on what service uh, I've qualified them for. Uh, that's going to nurture them through that process. So about seven to ten emails is going to nurture them through that process. Um, and if we if they don't hit the goal by the end of that seventh or tenth email, uh, then uh, I'm going to recycle them through another like anti follow up uh, sequence. Can you give a short example? Uh, so uh, so for e-commerce. <clears throat> so I'm uh, talking about an expensive problem like cart abandonment, right? So cart abandonment is an expensive problem, it's a common problem, and uh, how much it could cost them, right? So uh, I use statistics and stats, uh, and I have links out to uh, sites uh, that they can read those stats. Um, and uh, so for email marketing, so for uh, I do a quarterly newsletter service, and uh, there's in that nurture sequence, uh, it's taking them through uh, you know, stats and figures about quarterly newsletters, and then it's telling them this is actually a quarterly newsletter that you're on. Uh, you know, so it's, uh, it's, it's telling them you are on this service uh, right now. Thank you. You. How do you find out what those expensive client problems are? So it's always asking why, right? So uh, when you get to the like qualification <coughs> call or uh, you're researching. Um, so in the research phase, without talking to them, uh, you're, you know, you're finding out what their business is, right? And I'm, I'm pretty familiar with the, the two or three industries that I work in the most. And so I, 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 know, I sort of know those uh, expensive problems just by working in the industry. Uh, but if you don't, you can talk to them and you can keep asking them, you know, like, how does your business work? You know, is there, is there people that help you along the process? Do you have product managers? Well, what do the product managers do? Um, and, and how do they expense products? And uh, do they travel? And you know, what's the sales process like? So uh, just always, it's like my three-year-old daughter, like why, right? She just asks why, 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 right? Why is the sky blue? Well, it's blue because of this, well why, right? You just keep, it's, uh, you know, the three-year-old sales tactic, right? You just keep asking why uh, over and over again and just always stay curious, right? I'm just curious by nature and I just wanna know, uh, you know what makes their business tick and you'll eventually find out that, uh, you know, that home page that they've self-diagnosed their self with is really just them trying to get acquired in the next nine months. Like, oh, we're just trying to clean up our business to get acquired in the next nine months. Oh, that's, then you don't need a home page, you need something else, right? Uh, so we need to clean up these other areas first, right? So then you'll find out what that really expensive problem is uh, to get them over that hurdle. Way in the back. Um, how do you figure out if someone likes a beer or a cup of coffee? <laughs> So it's, uh, it, it's stalking them on uh, social media, right? So it's, it's easy nowadays. So if I see a martini in their hand uh, on social media, that's an easy giveaway, right? But if I, you know, if, if I stalk through and I don't see any alcohol pictures, um, then my first lead in is gonna be a coffee, right? Because you're never gonna offend somebody with a coffee, right? They might tell you, oh, I don't drink coffee, but you're not going to offend them uh, with coffee. <clears throat> So uh, I have an active campaign sequence for onboarding, uh, and the um, and the freebies that I give away, the client email templates. There's an onboarding uh, email sequence in there as well. Uh, but it's telling them, uh, you know, you know, welcome, you know, thank you for, uh, you know, trusting me with your project. Thank you for your payment because if they're getting uh, the email sequence, that means they paid me already. So thank you for your payment. Um, and then here's uh, how to work with me, you know, bullet points. Here's an email primer. Here's a best, <clears throat> so one of the uh, next emails there is an email primer. Like, here's how to best work with me over email, right? Because I don't want to box them into this project management solution, right? Because they have enough going on, right? They have their own database and their own work, right? So let's just work via email, right? Just old school, right? Because I'm a, I'm a solo operation. So it's not like I'm managing a hundred different clients. Uh, I'm only managing a handful of clients a month. So, uh, and that helps, you know, uh, that helps me get along. 
Uh, so I don't have to do, uh, like, I don't have to box people into my project management process. I just work with them. Uh, and they may have their own, right? They may, they may already be working in Asana, and they, mo they might want me to come into that, and I have no problem with that. So, but the onboarding process is you know, thanking them right? you know, for trusting me with their project and thanking them uh, you know, for the payment, uh, walking through how to work with me over the next you know, uh, 10, 12, 14, or however many weeks <clears throat> this project may be. Um, and then what it looks like uh, during mid-development. So uh, I have it timed. Uh, so for certain services, I have it timed where uh, at the fifth week mark, that email is going to go out at the fifth week. And so here we are at your stage of the project, blah, 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 and here's the next steps for that. Uh, and then here's what your website is going to look like, or here's what your project is going to look like for launch. So <clears throat> I have that timed as well. So towards the end of the project, they start getting emails uh, that's talking to them about what this launch process is going to look like. They need to start gathering uh, all the info that I need, like cPanel login information, uh, uh, domain registrar login information, et cetera. So it starts priming them and prepping them to, to get that information over to me and anything else that I may need. And so that's what that onboarding and nurturing process as a client looks like. Sorry, I know another question. So you mentioned you did um, PSD to HTML. Um, Someone was telling me I should look into Adobe XD for responsive design, but I was wondering, it's kind of a two-part question. Um, one, do you make like, do you, do you make them, do you make the web design portion and then a mobile design portion separate in Photoshop? Because I'm more of a Photoshop person. Or do you um, like use whatever software tool? And then second question, sorry, is do you send them the mockups or do you kind of already have it done and then show them? So when I get the project, it's been designed by someone else and I'm just creating a, a custom child theme uh, from that design. Uh, so I'm not actually doing any of the design work. <clears throat> Does that make sense? No, that makes sense. So no, I'm not outsourcing it. It's like a, so like a traditional marketing agency here in Atlanta would <clears throat> have their in-house designer design the web page, uh, you know, the desktop version, the, the tablet version, and the phone version. Uh, and then they would uh, come to me to, to create a custom WordPress child theme uh, from that design. So I'm just getting the PSD files. Right, the Photoshop files. That's what I'm getting. Oh, you're, you're the developer, not the designer. Correct. Yes. I am the developer, not the designer. Okay. Lastly, can I get your contact? Because I'm kind of in the same boat where I'm more of a developer than a designer. I didn't even know you could do that. I thought you had to have both hats. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, see me after uh, out in the hallway. We'll talk. Okay. Yeah. yeah do you find it difficult being a developer? Getting those designs and then translating, I mean, because do you sit with the designer and the client? I guess that's my question. Do you have those conversations? Because, I mean, oftentimes we'll get a design and it just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they don't have the content for the section or, you know. Uh, I don't do any content. Uh, mm -hmm. I just do lorem ipsum, right? I just, right. I dummy text the whole thing. It's up to them. Uh, that's where, that's what happens in my fairly limited scope project. So it's a fairly limited scope at a fixed price. I don't do any content, right? Uh, so for e-commerce, I'll set up three products, right? Three dummy products. I create a tutorial video out of that, right? And so uh, out of those three products, it's three separate types of products. So it might be a standard product, a variable product, and uh, any other type of product that they have. But I create three tutorial videos for them really quickly. And then they uh, do all the, the handwork. Uh, for their own products and their own content. Sure. So do you, um, I guess what I'm getting at is do you <coughs> guide the designer at all? There are times, yep. So if I'm brought in early, uh, I definitely okay. guide them, right? So here's some, uh, uh, I send them, you know, like some articles and, uh, you know, knowledge base uh, links uh, to some standard. Because you know the, <coughs> the, the problems that right. need to be solved. Right, right. And oftentimes, yeah. The, Gets lost in translation between the two. Right, because uh, I use Genesis uh, for okay. development, right? So I'll uh, 
uh, send them you know a lot of Genesis resources, right? Sure. So here's some standard practices for your header. Here's some standard practices for your footer. Uh, and if you stick to these, we're going to have an easy, smooth project. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's if I'm brought in early. If I'm not, uh, then <clears throat> I may... I just do what I'm told, right? Uh, so I may, I may dig into it, and I might find it difficult. And so I'll just go back to the designer, uh, or I may go back to the client and say, hey, this isn't really working, but here's a solution, right? Yeah. Always come, sure. with, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, always come with a solution. <clears throat> I'm a little bit confused about when you talked about um, the results you create for your clients, because if you, were, you were saying that you help the medical device companies um, like increase their revenue or something like that. But then, but your services, you're saying you're doing the, the development of design. Mm -hmm. So how, how do those two things work together? Like if you're just working off of someone's design and developing mm -hmm. for them. Um, and the reason I'm asking is because I often am building out like an, an, like an automation campaign on the back end mm -hmm. where I feel like one of my strengths is building, is you know, kind of plugging that into a, an existing strategy. Um, and I and I so I struggle with how to talk about the results I'm creating. I feel like the result I'm creating is sort of the the efficiency of the process versus the money that they're right. Coming. So I'm just wondering how you tie the, the two together. So uh, PSD to WordPress or development is just one service offering in my oh, utility okay. belt. Um, so marketing strategy <clears throat> or the brain work uh, is really like the cash cow, right? Um, and so for the, in the medical device uh, example, um, I worked with them very early on and I developed the patient uh, uh, outreach strategy. <clears throat> Uh, because uh, they had a focus group and they did research and they found that uh, in that particular uh, uh, type of surgery, which is heart surgery, uh, the patient had direct influence on what goes in their body in terms of heart valve. And so uh, it was uh, it was a no-brainer to create a patient outreach strategy uh, in tandem with a surgeon uh, outreach strategy as well. And so uh, that's and that's what I developed early on. So I was able to develop everything from scratch, like the automations, uh, uh, the informational sites, uh, et cetera. Yeah, so that's, yeah. That's the way to define your uniqueness and what kind of meditation or whatever we have to do to get that. So that's the best formula right there. If you follow that, uh, you'll probably make an extra $60,000 this year, right? Yeah. Just defining, you know, what it is that you do and what makes you unique uh, and, stand, and stands out, right? And this can be your LinkedIn summary, right? Or your LinkedIn uh, uh, bio, right? So, so how do you get through that, to that one statement? So you can go through past projects, right? So, uh, you know, one way is to go through, you know, like your, your roster of past projects. So, and then find out what was the business outcome? Like what, what happened on the, on the tail end of that project? Uh, was it a better website? Was it a, a pay-per-click campaign? Like what was, the, what was on the other end of that project? And then uh, if possible, reach out to the person or your contact and find out what happened. Like did, uh, you know, did, did sales increase? Did, uh, you know, uh, support calls increase? Like what happened uh, after your project? Especially if it's, you know, you've wrapped up the project for a significant amount of time, right? So reach out and get some feedback and find out what that is and go through your past projects. And if you don't, uh, if you're just starting and you don't have past projects, just think about a project that you would want to work on and try to reverse engineer that and find out what would be the outcome to that project. Uh, I just want to make a statement about that. Uh, once you do that, I find it's a lot easier to actually find clients. Because I used to be way too generalized. I just, mm -hmm. I did development. What do you got? Say, right. Now I'm just in development support because that's what I did a lot. So now I just solve other people's problems instead of them spending two days figured out. I figured out for them in an hour so that they can continue moving on. And I found once I, I niche, it was, it's a lot easier to find clients. Yeah. Yeah, and again, it's not a death sentence. You know, it's not like you're going to be stuck in that niche forever, right? You're going to get other types of work uh, because you've become an authority or an expert in that one topic, and other people are going to want to hire you for other things, right? 
well, why don't you do Shopify, right? Tell me why, right? And so you'll, you'll end up getting work in other areas. Uh, but you'll, you'll make a bulk of your money in, that, in this one area. So if you follow this formula or this template, uh, you're going to get generalized. You're going to find out, because uh, it, it's going to take some work to get here, right? So this is not an easy task. But once you get this down, uh, yeah, everything, everything is uh, going to be clear for you, right? So the content that you need to create for social media is going to come out of this. It's going to be really clear. Like everything is going to start to become crystal clear to you, right? Uh, how, how you should go about networking or what events you should go to, right? And you're like, well, I've been wasting all my time at these events, right? Once you get this down, everything gets clear to you. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's it's easy to get. It's evolving toward kind of more consultative coaching, but then I'm really a strong designer too, so I don't know mm -hmm. if I want to evolve more toward the consulting, right? Or do I want to evolve more toward UI? Well, we know the person who builds the blueprints gets the money, right? That's the most profitable part of the project mm -hmm. is building the blueprint. If you're building the house, right? You know, you're not. You're, you're getting a larger sum of money, but over time is going to diminish, right? It's, it, it's less profitable. So you're at building the blueprint, you're probably at you know, 60 to 80% profit margin. If you're building the house, you're probably at 30 or 20% profit margin, right? Over a period of time. So the most profitable part is your brain work. <clears throat> yeah. Exactly. And, uh, Seth Goat told the story about this developer in New York who built this four story building that uh, was a building. And after they had did two or three years in the project, all the sheetrock in the building started molding. And they were going to have to tear out all the sheetrock on all 40 floors and replace it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. He looked at it, he said, for eighty thousand dollars that can fix your problem. Hey, that's great, eighty thousand dollars to solve a four million dollar problem. Yeah. Okay, it's a deal. So then you just like wrote down the names and paint. Just paint all your shoe rocks with this. Yeah. Yeah. It was a deal for everybody. Yeah. And all he had to do was, of course, he had to learn about all this stuff. Right. But what, I think the way to frame it is, what is it worth to me? Uh, not how much time it takes. Yeah. And I've, I've found that it, uh, in order to get to this point, to find out what it's worth, just keep asking them why, the why conversation. So why, uh, you know, why hire someone so expensive like me? Why take on a risky project and, and you know, go through six or nine months of development? Why even do this? Uh, why not go to Upwork and find someone? Uh, why not go to Fiverr and hire someone there? Right? And then through that, they're going to tell you the reasons why. Right? Well, oh, we tried that already and it didn't work out. Or uh, we need to do this now instead of six months from now. Right? Because we're, we're bleeding cash at the moment and we need to fix this uh, button problem that's happening on our site, right? So they're gonna they're gonna tell you why. But it's some, if at any point they're like, you know what, I should go to Upwork. Then you know you don't have to write a proposal, right? You can uh, hang up the phone and go back to what you were doing, right? Uh, at any point. So if there's no more questions, <coughs> I'm uh, I'm done. Thank you uh, for showing up to hear me talk, and uh, I hope you level up. Thank you. <laughs>